welcome back to the channel for part two of this series on building mobile apps with Ionic Framework Vue.js Compositor. It's the second video where we are going to build a CRUD application using Firebase, Ionic Modal, Form Validation, and Composition API. In this video, we are going to actually put the form inside of the modal and start to capture some data and pass it back and forth between parent and child. Let's get to the code. Okay, um, we're just going to quickly get the ionic form field in place um, in this video we're not actually going to implement the form we're just going to put the items on the modal um, use the v model to capture the data um, save the data data locally save the state locally and then on saving we'll pass the state back to the parent on cancel we'll pass a cancel back without passing the um, information back so this should look pretty um, familiar for those of you who have used Ionic in the past. The common pattern for using the Ionic item in the form is use an item, then use a label, then use a specific input element, um, and then wrap the whole thing in an item again. It gives you a nice clean UI. So that's basically what we're doing here. Our form is going to have a title. It's going to have a description. It's going to have a due date. And that's going to be about it. So let's get all these set up properly. And then um, as you can see, I'm using a field called form info, which we will put in right now. And then form in info is going to be a ref and that ref is going to basically hold all the values. The ref is going to make this thing reactive. And remember from the earlier videos that I discussed, um, you need to unwrap the references uh, when you're in your script code, but they get unwrapped by default inside the template. So just passing the form info back now gives us access to all the properties on that object in the top of the form so let's make sure we set up this reference prop properly and let's make sure we include all of the properties properly inside of the component so we i know we have a title let's get that set we're going to um, set default values to blank we have a description okay we have a due date and i think that's it um, let us check to be sure. Description due date. Yep, that's uh, that's what we got. So let's test this out and see if we're getting the, our cancel button still working. Our model still showing. Our fields are showing. Um, oh, but I get caught on this every single time. I did not add the appropriate components. So what components do we need to add here? We need our button. We need our item. Oh, sorry, we need our label. And then we need our ion item. No, nope. do I have item already? Oh, we got the input. Well, let's let's do this an easier way. Um, we'll let uh, the type ahead help us um, get the proper names for the things that we need. Let's give us a little bit more space here, and get back to it. Okay. So we have everything in place. Oh, I need to add my uh, date time for a due date that we want to um, capture for our object. This is just an example to show the different types of um, input elements that you can use in your application. And also in the next video, we're going to do form validation. And so I want to show how we can use the um, form validation on different input types in Ionic. So we have our fields in place. Let's try to put some data in them and see what we get. We get our data control showing nicely. It can be edited. We can enter a description. Uh, but uh, I want my description to be a text area, not just an input field. So let's modify that to a text area. Okay. Let's set some rows on this text area to make give us a little bit more space. There you go. That looks nice and clean. Um, let's also let's stack the label to give us a little more space on the smaller uh, mobile devices. So we'll put the label above the actual text that you're entering. That looks a little bit better. Let's try that out. Um, we got a title. We have a description. And we have a due date. I'm always impressed at how quickly you can get a nice clean UI up and running using Ionic Framework. This looks okay. You know, it's not great, but it looks okay. All right, so now we know we can get our input in and our input's being captured. So what do we have to do to actually 
Because remember, on the close, we're emitting this event, and in the emit, you can pass a payload, and in the payload, we want the information to be the data that was entered in the form. So let's set that up. We're going to pass back in our payload a form info property, and that form info property will unwrap all the values that existed in our form info reference that we created. So let's give this a try. Title, description, let's pick a to date. And let's close this guy. And as you can see, we're getting our data passed. Cancel is false. And, and no, we are not getting our data back. Why didn't we get our data back properly? Um, let's check this. Check, check. Input text area. Looks like I'm still yeah, I'm missing all my different um, input elements. I didn't have my text area. So, I mean, this is going to catch, continue to catch me. Hopefully they can find a better way to spit out a, some other TypeScript error or something. Because I get caught on this, as you know who's following my videos, I've been caught on every single video for this. So let's add these uh, components properly. Let's make sure we import them, add them, and let's see if we get our, our data back this time. Okay, let's refresh this, get the code, let's try again. We have our title, our description, our due date, close. Okay, we're getting some values back in our form info object, which is what we expected, so that's good. Um, what is the next step? And as I said here, it's getting passed back on my emit event. Let's try this again. Uh, we don't want this. You see it's leaving the... Um, data that was entered in the form previously so we need to make sure we clear that guy out um, after we pass the data back with the emit so um, another thing we want to make sure is that when we when the user enter, enters a canceled that we don't pass any data back so we'll use a ternary operator in here on this object if it's not canceled then we will actually pass the data back if it is canceled we'll just pass null back uh, let's clean this up properly. There you go. And then, so that fixes that problem. If it's not canceled, get a value is canceled, clear it out. Um, and then the other thing that I think we should do while we're in here is, you know how you previously saw when I re-rendered the uh, dialog, you saw the previous content. And so what we're gonna do is after we emit an event, either a cancel we're not canceled, we're just going to clear out the uh, reactive property. Because remember, these pages are cached. They're still sitting in the DOM, so the values you enter in them are going to stay there. So let's try again, see what we get. All right, so let's enter my title. Enter my description. Let's enter a due date. Let's close. And we get our data as we expected, and canceled false. Um, and now the to check this, see, I open it up. My data is cleared out, which is what I wanted to see. So that is all working as expected. And let's see what else we have to do here. Um, let's actually remove this alert because it's kind of getting annoying and it looks Yankee because it's just your normal browser alert. And we're gonna do what I know what you folks have seen me do before, which is to just um, create like a little dial, uh, debugging section on the page or we'll use the uh, pre-tag and we will just um, dump the JSON object on the page so you can see it. And we're gonna start the process of utilizing the modal info data property that I created in the very first video. And what we're gonna do is, in this example, we're gonna store the return data. Um, but what we're gonna do in the next um, tutorial is we're gonna show how you can use that to pass the initial data into the form, uh, modal form. Um, for example, if you're using the same form to create objects as to edit the objects. And that'll be what we're going to cover in the next one. So I'm just kind of laying the groundwork for it. So all we're doing here is we're taking the exact same JSON stringify. Um, we'll put the null kind of two to space it out properly. And we're just going to render it on the page. So now you can see when there's nothing there, uh, show is false, data is null. Now when I show the modal, um, we'll get the data. We will get a description. We will select the due date. Let's pick any old date. And when I close it, you see I'm getting the data back. My state is correct, show is false, and data is canceled false. Um, and I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, you can see on the cancel, I get the cancel true, which is correct. 
Um, so as we wrap this up, stay tuned for the next video where we will start to show how to um, edit the data along with um, maybe we'll try current, maybe we'll try saving it. No, I think we'll just stick with just editing the data. So we'll see you next time. Take care. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye.